emitter, some modifiers, another emitter, and boom! Greetings, my sizzling hot creatives. Let's get into our snazzy spaceman suits and start slinging some slag. Of course, to do any of this, you need a volcano first. And I've got a whole bunch of videos to show you how to make your own, or you can download this whole scene file once it's done through my Patreon. Now we do have our volcano, so let's just get going. We need to get ourselves an emitter from X Particles. Drop that in and put it right about near the top of the volcano where normally you would have an eruption happen. Normally, sometimes, but not always. So let's put that right in its place where we want it. I'm just going to put it right in the middle and go into the object settings under emitter and change the shape to a bit more of a circle. Increase the radius to about 100 and change the cone angle to about 20 degrees. Now we have something that's just shooting some bluish blobs from the top of this volcano. Nearly done, but not quite. Next thing to do is to go under emission and change it from a rate to just be a single shot and set that shot time to be maybe about 20 frames. So that's going to shoot a bunch of particles at frame 20 and just have those float out upwards ad infinitum. Now we want a bit more than those single thousand particles, so I'm going to add an extra zero to that, so that's going to shoot an even thicker carpet of particles. Now the lifespan of these particles, we want to change from full lifespan, just down to 400 frames, so they do die after a while, and the variation of that lifespan to the full 400 frames, so they're really going to die at random times throughout. Speed we can crank up to about 500, and the randomness or variation of that speed, crank that up to, to good 300. Now finally in these settings, we want to change the radius of that from about 3 down to just 2, and turn up the variation to a full 1.5 or thereabouts. So now we've got this shot, a mm, little bit more of a an ice cream cone just shooting out of there. Bit better. Under display, let's quickly change the color of that ice cream cone to be based on a gradient parameter and have that gradient be uh, something a little bit more fiery, I think would be good for a volcano. So flame one, that'll certainly do. See what that looks like. Okay, okay, not bad. It is creating the particles at the very darkest point here first and then slowly, since we've got the gradient parameters set to age, they sort of get brighter and brighter over time, and now it really does look quite like an ice cream cone. But we want the exact opposite of that. Not the exact opposite of an ice cream cone, don't know what that would be, but the exact opposite of this gradient. So let's invert that, and also distribute those knots so it's just evenly spaced. So now they should start quite bright, and slowly sort of get darker and darker over time as they die. Finally, let me change these uh, from squares. And let me tell you, they don't look anything like squares to me. I mean, is that, are those squares? They look like circles. Anyway, let's change it from so-called squares to lines. Just because I think they look a little bit better. It's like having a motion blur on them. All right, so that's our lovely ice cream cone. That emitter is now uh, fully set up, and we can start doing some modifiers. Now, the latest update of X Particles has these new Nexus modifiers, basically the same, just start with NX instead of XP, and they're a whole bunch faster. You can use whichever you like to do this. I'm going to stick with the old ones for now. First one we want is an XP Turbulence, and I'm going to make that a child of our emitter, and zero out the transformations. Used to be reset PSR, and now it's zero out transformations, and is option zero. And then I'm going to give that turbulence modifier a field, so it just affects the area around my emitter. I'll make that one a cylinder field, and put it on the z-axis. Change the height to about 50, and the radius to about 200, just so it keeps that emitter right in the center. Now, under objects, we want to probably crank up that strength a little bit. Right now, it just looks like this, pretty much the same old ice cream cone. But if we set that strength to something like 500, that ice cream cone changes dramatically. And if we set the scale a little bit lower on that, it's going to give a little bit more detail. And then the last thing we want to do to this is to uncheck the x-axis and uncheck the z-axis. So it's only affecting the particles on the y-axis. 
That looks a little something like this. Kind of erupty, right? Good. Now, these keep going forever, and to sort that out, we need to create a gravity modifier. But now that kind of has the opposite effect, and they fall far too fast. Now, this whole scene is not really to scale right now, but I'm going to say about one tenth of the gravity will give us about ten times the perceived scale of the scene. So with one tenth the gravity, this is how they fall down. Looks, looks a lot bigger, doesn't it? Makes it a little bit slower. Speaking of slow, the next modifier we want is an XP drag modifier. And that's going to slow them down a bit more. I'll set the coefficient from sphere to something like cube, because that feels a little bit rockier. And the strength, I'm going to crank that to 250. And that looks like this instead. Looks a bit nicer now that the particles are breaking a bit more. Finally, and this is actually the last modifier we're going to create for this, we need a kill modifier. I'm going to set this kill modifier so it's right underneath the volcano and sort of covers the entire area. So any little particles that fall through just get killed instantly. No remorse. Now it looks like this, meaning not like much at all. And that's because I forgot to change the volume mode from outside bounds to inside bounds. So now it's only going to kill particles that are inside the box instead of all the particles outside of it, which was all of our particles. So as you can see, particles fall down, they hit the box, they die. But come to think of it, we don't actually want any of them to be falling through the volcano, really. They should be bouncing on top of it and shattering into even more lava bombs, because that's what lava bombs do. That's kind of their whole thing. So we need to set up some collisions. All we need to do for that is to select the volcano that we all hopefully have, right click and give it an X particles collider tag. I'm going to decrease the bounce because this is gravelly rock after all and increase the variation. So it bounces a little bit differently and turn that friction all the way up to the max. And this is enough to have our particles collide with the mountain and just slowly sort of glide down the side of it. Already looks all right, but it could look better. And this is where the second emitter comes in. Right here on the collision tag, there is a tab called spawn and we want to enable that. Now we're going to add an emitter that creates an XP emitter underscore spawning. So let's rename the other emitter XP emitter source. Now you don't want to play this just yet. Because if we do, the whole thing will probably start freezing on us quite hard and then eventually the entire machine just freezes over to death. So before we try to play it, we want to go back into our collision tag. Under exclusions, we exclude the XP emitters spawning. And we go back under the spawn tab and check kill original particle after spawning. So as soon as one of these particles hit the surface, it spawns new particles, but it dies on the first one. So it's not going to bounce around and keep creating new particles constantly. And look at that. And this is kind of how you could make rain if you wanted to. Now the number to spawn, we want that to be a little bit higher than 10. So I'm going to set that to about 25. And right now they're just spawning in random directions from where the particle impacts. We want to change that under direction to be source particle. So now they continue in the same direction as the source particle. But we also want to turn up the spread to somewhere around 70%. And so they do continue kind of vaguely in the same direction as the source particle, but also spread out quite a lot. Now let's turn our attention to this new emitter we've got here and change some of its settings. Now the emission is controlled only, so that's controlled by the collisions of the source particles. But let's change the lifespan. I'm going to set that to be 500 frames with a randomness of also 500 frames. So it lives a bit longer than the source particles and a little bit more randomly. Now the speed is fine at 150, but the variation, we want to set that to max. So there's no telling in which direction these particles fly or at what speed. Now and the size, we want to make sure that is smaller than the source particle. I'm going to make that quite small, down to about 0.8 centimeters. And we want to set the variation to be mucho. I'm going to set that to 0.7 or 0.6. Finally, on this emitter, we want to go into the display settings and match that to our other emitter. So instead of squares, we want lines. 
And instead of single color, we want that to be gradient based on a parameter. Load up that flame one that we used, flip it and reverse it and distribute it. Okay, so let's have a look at this. And we've got a ton of particles shooting out. And as soon as they hit the side of the mountain, they give birth to new particles that come cascading down. One little issue with this is that these new particles being excluded from the collision of the volcano, they do go through the volcano and are just raining down to their inevitable deaths underneath. That's a bit sad, so let's fix that. What we want to do is uh, select our volcano main and then create an instance of that. I'm going to put that in the same null and then I'll add a new X particles collider tag to that one and make sure to match these settings to the other one, except for the spawn, of course. And then we go into exclusions there and we exclude the source emitter instead. So now each emitter has its own collider. So realistically, they should all collide with something. Now you can see we have a little bit of an issue right here around the top of the volcano, but there's kind of a death ray shooting straight out into space. That is because our spawning emitter here is affected by the XP turbulence that's supposed to only affect the source emitter. So let's go into the spawning one and modifiers. We drag in the XP turbulence and this here blue wrong way symbol means that it's being excluded from this emitter. So let's have a look at that again. Now that is much nicer. But I do think it's looking a little bit fuzzy around here. And to fix that, I think we just need to take the spawning emitter and turn down the speed by quite a bit, just to make sure the scale looks a little bit more the right size. Yeah, that looks much nicer. Now, what do we need to render these bits of slung slag? Using standard render, uh, initially nothing renders. So the first option is to create an X particles generator add ourselves like a little sphere or something, incredibly low poly into that. And on object on the XP generator, we drag in our emitter source and make sure we set our clone type to instances. Duplicate is gonna be incredibly slow. And with the render instances, we're gonna lose the color information that our particles have. So instances is the way to go. And in draw mode, right now we've got geometry only. And if we see what happens when we do that, we'll see that whatever happens, happens very, very, very slowly, just because there's a ton and ton of geometry there. So let's set the draw mode not to geometry only, but let's set it to geometry on render only. And then we get back our nice looking ice cream cone particles. Now, of course, we need a material and any old rock material will do. I'm going to use this one that I just pasted in there. Makes our particles look a little bit something like this. Basically just spheres. Fair enough. Now all we need to do to get these nice particle colors on here is to go into luminance and that's where we want it because these lava bombs after all they do glow. We go into texture and we select a MoGraph color shader and this time when we render they've got that nice bit of glow. And to get our spawning particles in there, we need to create a copy of the XP generator and just drag the spawning one as the emitter in there. And this is what we get. Nice little lava balls casting light. Now this is a little bit slow to work with, but it is geometry, so it does anything you want geometry to do. But there is a much easier way. You could also, let's get rid of these XP generators for now, could go into create extensions and simply create an X particles material. Add that to your emitters and instantly you've got particles rendering and a bit quicker. Now they might look a little bit flat by default and that is because the default illumination setting is set to flat. So if you want, so if you want some depth to them, you can set them to diffuse and then you get balls like we just had. You can use self-illumination to give them whatever level of glow you want. Now this one is quick and dirty, but maybe not as flexible as we'd like. But both of those are good options for standard renderer. Now, if you want to render this whole thing in something like Arnold or let's say Redshift, for instance, 
there is a third option. Let's remove our X particles material from there. And instead we add to both our emitters, a render tag and a redshift object tag. And in there we can change the particles mode to probably something like spheres instances. And once again, if I open up a redshift render view and perhaps we go into lights and we get rid of the standard lights. And inside the redshift render view, we have got our balls back. Now, by default, without a material on, they just take on the colors of the particles, which, you know, looks pretty okay. But if you want to add your own material to these, like this crappy rock material, they forget everything about what color they're supposed to be. But to get that back, we simply go into the node editor and add a node called color user data. You can plug that one in to the overall emission color and then simply select the attribute name to be one of the presets, particle color. And now we've suddenly got that color back. And we can shade it however we like and work with it as a regular material. In Arnold, you do basically the same thing, but I believe it's called just user data there. And the Arnold tag that you add to your emitters is called the Arnold tag. But now you're gonna have to help me out because I don't know what to do next. Should we add some mad smoke sims to this in the next tutorial? Or how about, this time of year, some Aurora Borealis? You can let me know in the comments which you want, but really, that's not going to do much, because ultimately it's up to my Titan tier patrons which one I do next, so you're going to have to ask them nicely. Big thank you to my patrons, especially the immortal ones, and to you all, stay in motion. Hey.